Good evening, everyone. We want to welcome you tonight in Jesus' name. God is so good. And I want to welcome you tonight, Amy. Welcome to the show tonight. And I just pray tonight would be a show of God's power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, welcome here. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, tell everybody where you're from or, well, where you're at. <laughs> That is awesome. I'm so thrilled to have you on, Amy. It's just always such a thrill to see, um, you know, people walking with God and choosing to follow Jesus. You know, there's so many people that talk about Jesus and um, they hear messages about him their whole life, but not many people um, choose to follow him. You know, the Bible says this, it says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. I remember the first time I read that and it just sank in and I'm like, oh man, wow God, how many people serve you? They're busy, 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 even in the, even in religious things, but they're not really following Jesus in obedience, you know, to everything that he asks of them, right? It's fine to, you know, to be fulfilled as part of a group thing or, you know, to, to make yourself feel good even in doing good works, but... It's not the same as being willing to follow Jesus at whatever cost and wherever he sends you, you know? True. Anyway, hallelujah. What is the temperature down in Florida today? Um, well, this morning, I didn't check it this afternoon, but this morning it was, I think, 24. 24? Getting the sweater weather. <laughs> well, what about the afternoon? What was it like? I think we it's had anything. like 20, I think we had low 20s today, like 22. Yeah, you can definitely feel the change in the air here this week. It's starting to feel a little cooler, which is very nice because normally it's like plus 40 every single day. So. <laughs> wow, praise God. Well, God is wonderful. And um, so if you guys are joining us right now, why don't you share this post quickly, quickly share it to your page. Invite a few friends. If you have been saying, God, where do you want me? How can I find the direction of God in my life? How how can I build my faith? Um, tonight is your night. So if you know someone that needs some of those encouragements and answers in their life, why don't you log on or log on? Ha ask them to log on. Invite them and share this post so that uh, it can be a blessing to someone else. We, we would just want to be a resource to equip and train people around the world to be effective to bring the gospel to all nations and uh, we love to partner with people in that so um, anyway we're gonna take some we're gonna have some testimonies probably throughout as Amy's uh, preaching or teaching and I might chime in now and then hopefully not too much I don't want to steal uh, what God wants to say through you Amy um, but afterwards we're gonna pray for some people I think some prayer requests have come in already so I'm going to try and make sure I don't miss out on those as you're teaching. So yes. anyway, howdy ho, everybody. We love you. God loves you. We just invite the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Any hindrance in your life, anything of lack and poverty and um, just death and sickness that's been against your life, anything that has hindered you from stepping into what God has for you tonight, we declare in Jesus' name that, you know, he became the curse for you. And he broke off every limitation that the enemy sent against you. And so God is for you. We declare that tonight in Jesus' name. It's a move ahead night. It's a breakthrough day for us. Hallelujah. So, Amy, I want you to go ahead. Why don't you start out um, and uh, just begin to share what God's put on your heart. I'm excited to learn. in any time um yeah because obviously we're all learning and we're all growing and we all have different experiences with the lord and stuff but 
um, something that I've really been learning is that, like, we don't have to have it all figured out before we can begin to pour out into other people because there's people that are maybe just walking one step behind us. Maybe they're two steps behind us. Maybe they're starting right where we began. And what we know and what we have imparted into us now can really help them and can really grow them. That's that's the wow. way, that's discipleship. That's, that's what's happened to me here. That's what happens when you get plugged in, connected to a church, connected to a Bible study, is that you get wisdom from people who have been where you are right now. And you can get keys that can accelerate you and get you to where you want to go faster than um than you just working it out on your own so that's, that's what so the body powerful. of christ, christ is for wow. and i'm so grateful for for leaders and and people who report into me and so um yeah i just encourage you like pastor ivan said get hungry tonight the holy spirit is here and he will speak to you directly um concerning your situation if you're just hungry for him and and pulling on the anointing tonight so mm. Amen. And we just talked about that, Amy, about like uh, we're going to be starting the Bible Foundations course and um, it's just going to be awesome. You know, like uh, <laughs> I'm so excited because it's exactly what you're saying is that if you can learn and plug in somewhere, it's so that you can become confident in the word of God and now you come and mentor someone else. That's that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's the body of Christ. The world system is how can I get to the top? How can I get to where I'm going? And the kingdom of God is completely opposite. It's how can I help the people around me? How can I help somebody else get further? And that's when you see the overflow. So, Amen. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I guess um, when... Actually, this, this has been burning in my heart for probably the last two weeks already. And then Pastor asked me if I would come on tonight. So I just already knew that this is what I was going to talk about. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and it's really just a question of how to know if I am in God's perfect will for my life. Mm. How do I know that, that I am doing what God wants me to do? So you might find yourself in a place where you desire to be in God's perfect will for your life. You desire to be doing the things that you know God has put on the inside of you, but you're just not sure if you're there, if you're on the right path, if you're if you're completely off. And so I just want to share with you from the Word of God and just also, um, I think some of this, this is from a message that I listened to a long time ago, so um, I don't Come take on. credit for, for the points here. Some of it, I, I can't even tell you exactly where it came from, so some of it is just what I've learned. Some of it might be from other ministers who have uh, who I've learned from too. So, Amen. Um, yeah, <laughs> praise God. So the first thing is that um, if you have a dream on the inside of you, you need to know if that dream is from God. And one of the biggest indicators is if it is bigger than you. So if you can do your own dream, if, if you're dreaming up the biggest thing you can think of and you're like, okay, I think I can do that, I'm telling you that is not God. Mm. <laughs> He'll always give you something that is bigger than what you can do on your own. Yes. Because if he gives you anything that you can do in your flesh, it's not it's it's not God then. It there's gonna be it's not gonna bear fruit if you're doing it in the flesh. Yes. And so I find even like my time here, like I would say in my first year of Bible school, like the Lord had given me like a like so he put something in my heart, something to do, and I was like, Wow, like that's big. Like how I don't know how I'll ever do that. And then like the next year it's like you you grow and you're like, Oh wow, like I could literally do that in like a couple years. Like that's yes. not it's not that that hard. Wow. And then he gives you a bigger picture and a bigger vision and you're like whoa, like, how would I ever do that? <laughs> and then you grow some more. And then, and you're like, oh, like, that's very doable. But that, because that's just God, he's just developing you and growing you to wow. be able to do those things. Um, but that should always be the case, that you should always be needing God to get where you are going. That, like, God, you have given me this vision, you have given, you put this thing on my heart to do, and there yeah. is no way I could ever get there on my own. I need you to do a work in me i need you to yeah. take stuff out of me i need you to put stuff in me amen in order to get there you know so it's like uh it's like bodybuilding right it's like yeah. working your muscles um 
you know, you might not be able to lift some, a little child can maybe only lift 20 pounds, right? But, but if they keep at it and they keep growing, you know, it's going to increase or, or I just love the example too of like, how like a young child looks up to their parents or especially their dad so often because, you know, they can't reach the top of the fridge, right? They can't look at, they want to so badly look on top of everything, right? They want to um, be tall, right? They want to be big and and they know that they can rely on their dad or their parents to to reach up there and do something for them. But you know what? As the years go by and they keep growing, you know, it's powerful because all one day they can reach the top for themselves, right? They can get up there. They can reach that, but they have to stay alive and then they'll keep growing, you know? And so it's so key to keep our spirit alive. It's so key to keep plugged in, you know, and keep feeding our spirit in the word of God and keep plugged into fellowship and connection because I think like if you were all on your own, it would have been a lot harder and taken a lot longer you know, you could totally, you could grow, right? You could depend on God totally, right? It can happen, but many people don't have that kind of discipline in their life um, yep. without a group. So, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's so true. And I think the same thing is spiritually that, like, you can't really judge. It's hard to judge yourself on how much you're growing. Mm -hmm. because you see your own struggles you see where you are every single day and you're like god i still have not made progress but mm -hmm. like that's just like with the kid thing like um if you if you haven't seen a kid in like a couple years you're like whoa you've grown a yep, lot exactly. but they don't see it and so just take courage with encourage yourself with that that if you if you have been hungry for god you have been pressing in for the things of god and you feel like you're not seeing results just trust god just trust, just keep your heart in the right place. Just Amen. trust that God, you are the author and the finisher of my faith. That if I keep my heart right before you, I just keep pursuing you. I keep delighting myself in you that I am growing. Amen. And you just have to do it by faith. And then you'll see the results. You really will see the results. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is so, good. Um, yeah, the next thing that that goes along with that is um are you joyful in what you're doing hmm. so like are you being fulfilled is there a purpose to what you're doing right now so you might be and there's seasons for different things so you might be working a job right now you might be working nine to five like knowing that you're called to do something else but <laughs> but you're just in this season right now of still working hmm. of still like like transferring over to what you feel is in your heart yeah um, and and that's okay that's okay to be there yes um but i encourage you that that even in that season that there will be joy that the, that the lord will be fulfilling you for that season that you might feel the urge you might feel you might feel like it's time to go but there's gonna be joy there yes and exactly when, when you are in his perfect will when you are walking out exactly what he's called you to do because even okay so you could even be in ministry and not be in god's perfect will for your life you could be pastoring and that is not what god has called you to do and there's not going to be any joy in it even though it looks good even yes. though it looks like that's what you should be doing right now but when you are like just doing office work you're just doing administrative work you are like flowing with joy so happy like you know that's your element that's where you're supposed to be yeah that that that's god's calling on your life there's gonna be wow. joy there it's gonna fit you amen yeah that's powerful <laughs> yes that's true right and uh sometimes sometimes people go looking for uh a position or or a title or something mm -hmm. and they find that it's just not what they expected right and one thing i think i love that uh, joyce has taught me is um you know that when god calls you to something there's a grace there and an anointing that that just gives you the strength to do what you normally couldn't do in that role right it, it's just like there's this grace that empowers you and, and you can somehow handle it where if you're not called to it, it's going to be on your own strength. You're going to be stressed. You're going to hate it. 
and you're going to be mm-hmm. frustrated all the time and it's not there won't be like any sense of like accomplishment or any of that right you'll be very yep. negatively focused probably so absolutely and that can also be an indicator of god moving you mm-hmm. where like you you did find joy in, sure. in doing something you did have the anointing in that thing yes but then God wants you to move, and you're no longer anointed to be in that position. <laughs> right. He so may, Sometimes move. he makes you restless, right? It's, sometimes there's the restlessness. Yeah. It's like, okay, it's uh, time to shift things up here a bit. So. Yeah. Absolutely. That's happened to me a few times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, if, um, if you are in a place, though, of, like, of, you really want to make a move of faith and you want to step in to what you know God has called you to do. Yes. Just ask God what your, what your, what your step of faith is. Mm. Ask him what your faith move is Mm. because faith is an action. So if you're believing God to, you could, it, not everything is about ministry. Not everybody is called to the fivefold full-time ministry. So I talk about that because that's, that's where that's where I feel like I'm going, but you could you could relate it to anything. If yeah. you feel like you're called to be a mom, you're called to be a stay at home mom. Please don't like do that with your whole heart. You're gonna yes. raise Holy Ghost fire children. Of Come God. on, yes, <laughs> the next like, president, don't... right? The next prime minister. Yeah. You know, and it, and it's it's like this. We, me and Amy were talking before, uh, a few minutes before the uh, broadcast here, and I was saying how like my heart, I want to see millions of people saved, right? And I mean, we've seen uh, again last Sunday was another person gave their heart to Jesus. You know, there was their first time in the service. We praise God for that. It was so awesome. And but you know what? It was because someone was faithful to invite a friend or to invite a relative, right? But then we had to be faithful to present the gospel, you know? Um, we got to be diligent in this stuff. And I mentioned to Amy how, like, it feels like there's a trickle happening. But listen, if we're faithful with that trickle, and there's a trickle of salvations happening, and we're faithful, God is going to turn up the tap. He's going to turn it on bigger, and, you know, more is going to happen. More of a flow will happen in those things that are on our heart. Yeah. Absolutely. And so many times the Lord is preparing you for what is in your heart. Yes. That like, he's preparing you for what's coming. That if he gave it to you right now, it it might break you. But um, that like, and everything, and it's not, not that, like you're not, obviously, you know what I'm saying with that. <laughs> like, like, you you have to, you, the Lord has to prepare you for, for what he's, for what he's about to give you. Yes. And so, Ooh. Say that again. Say that again. Come on, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I said. <laughs> the Lord's the Lord is uh has to prepare you for what he's about to give you. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Hmm. So wow. so yeah, just just refuse refuse to look or to be discouraged by the natural things. I know it's we're, we're also often results oriented, but we need to be obedience oriented and, um, and just trust to look at Noah. He, he was building an ark and preaching the gospel for 120 years without seeing a single person saved. Exactly. But he was being obedient and he just, he just kept going. He said, well, I'm not seeing any results. He never even seen rain before. He didn't even know what rain was. Come on. That's amazing. <laughs> he didn't know what was even coming. You know, Amy, oh man, you're just firing me right up. This is awesome. (laughs) You know what? So many people have never experienced the reign of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Come on. This is the season, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last days, which started at Pentecost. But you know what? So many churches have missed it. And and I know sometimes we miss it. 
And it's like God wants us to get the former and the latter rain and the fullness of the wine and the, and the you know, the, uh, come on, the fruit of it, right? The harvest of it. It's like, oh man, Holy Spirit, Lord, like forgive us for missing the reign of God. You know, like mo how many churches don't even know what the reign of the Holy Spirit is? Oh, man. It's true. Wow. That was awesome, Amy. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. I, I feel Shoot. the reign of heaven. You could be in your house right now and just lift your hands Shoot. to heaven Shoot. right now. Shoot. And that reign of the Holy Spirit will come mm. upon you. The Lord is looking for people whom he can fill in these times. And mm. all you have to do is be available and be obedient. And he will come and he will fill you even right now in your house. Yes. And you've never felt the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit that you can feel Him right now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for every Ooh. hungry heart right now, like never before. God, make yourself so yes, real to them. Let your presence invade their houses now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for setting them apart. Thank you for setting them ablaze. That they will fulfill every plan and purpose that you have for them. A new generation, a new army is being risen up. Mm. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, and the Lord will tell you what your faith move is. I'm telling you. Um, I don't I'm, I don't say this in a boastful way, but the Lord just put it on my heart again to empty my bank account because I'm going to the next level. I just decided I'm going to the next level. I'm not <laughs> staying where I am. I am stepping out in faith. God, you have prospered me this far, hmm. but I will not stop believing you. I'm believing you for more now. You've met all my needs. Now I'm believing for other people's needs, God. Yes. And just, you just got to keep going. Just keep going. Wow. That's powerful. That is so powerful. And God's going God's gonna to bring so much increase into your life. And you know what? Like you said... May, you know, not everyone is right now called into like maybe a, a prophetic office or a pastoral office. But you know what? Wherever they have been placed by God, God wants to prosper them right there. Yeah. So that they can be just as much a part of the gospel, just as much a part of the miracles, just as much a part of sending missionaries, sending evangelists, sending apostles, sending prophets... Because, you know, listen, Jesus said, go into all the world. He said, you personally need to go into all the world. Well, you know what? Some of us can't maybe go into all the whole earth. But, you know what? We can when we partner. We can when we take part and we partner and sow into and pray into someone's, you know, that God does send into geographical locations you know, we can actually be there with them in spirit, in, in right, in prayer and finances and backing them with prayer so that they see also the miracles of God and the protection, the supernatural testimonies. Yeah. Yeah, we see that even like with David in the Bible where like he left some of his army to guard their stuff. He just like left some of the soldiers there to, to guard their camp and the rest of them went out and fought and won the battle. But the, right. the soldiers who were guarding the guarding the camp, they still got the same reward. They still yeah. got, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, I think uh, if I could just quickly, uh, there was a scripture I read this week, and it's in Luke chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse... Um, verse 22 and it, so this is jesus is just born and it talks about mary uh, having to wait 40 days for purification according to the law of moses and after that she brought jesus to jerusalem to present him to the lord you know and the, the one thing that um that just hit me for some reason was why did they have to wait 40 first of all why did he have to wait eight days to be presented to god and why did why did Mary have to wait forty days um, before she could come to the temple? You know, to be purified. But you know, it's oh man, it's so powerful. And I'm not making a doctrine out of this. But one thing that just excited me was, you know, eight times 
eight or sorry, eight times five is forty. And and one thing I think is that um, I think that that eight days represents because when the child would come, they would circumcise the child, which is a representation of the cutting away of the flesh. Right? It's a representation of the deepest things in you that pull on you in the flesh. Jesus, you know, when we put our faith in him, it cuts those things off. And you know what? I think too often people try to come to the presence of God. They try to come and and like do all this stuff for God. But you know what? They haven't they haven't had the word of God cut away the fleshly things where they come in the spirit and in truth, right? And so they so they get this mixture. So there's still a um, they still got bondage in their life, right? They still have different things happening. And you know what? It's such a powerful picture. And you, th you think about Jesus, right? And you think about with the cutting of the flesh, there's a purification that happens. And like Jesus, you know, fasting 40 days in the wilderness, you know, um, the earth is purified after 40 days of a flood. You know, like just, there's numerous examples in the Bible of, of things with the number 40 but I don't know I was just like thinking that the main thing was to me is that when if we want to enter into God's will one of the things that will hold us back Amy is our own desires our own natural desires and you know what God is saying he wants to cut that away from us he wants to to just cut that off from our life so that we can come into what the holy of holies so we can come there with a, a purified heart and be presented to God. Amen. I think this is just sometimes the problem. We want to be presented to God, but we want to drag our flesh along. You know, we just don't want to let it go. We want to hold on to it. And God's like, listen, I need to cut these things out of your life. Yeah. Um, and I just think like sometimes we miss God's perfect will over and over and over again. Because we refuse to let the Holy Spirit do His work and the Word of God do the, the cutting, right? It's it's very effective and sharp. So I just wanted to say, like, I think that's, like, such an important prelude into, like, launching into this thing. I think that's just critical, so. Yeah, it's, like, almost like we identify with our flesh. And, mm. like, we feel like if we give it up, we're giving away a part of ourselves. Yes. But have to realize that that's not mm. us that we were set free from that that Come that's on. not who we are yes and yeah sorry i just gonna plug my phone in here <laughs> you're running low on battery yeah it's all good though i got my charger praise god <laughs> i got 40 percent left on my laptop so we can go for a little while yet <laughs> ah. amen you got some more there some more uh wonderful faith-filled words Um, <laughs> yeah, another thing is, like, just, um, and I think we kind of already touched on this, but it's really, are your gifts being used? Mm. So, like, um, yeah, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but, like, like, if you're really gifted in something, like, it's usually because the Lord has called you to it. Like, it's not by accident. It's not like, oh, I should be, like, challenging myself and doing something that I'm not good at to learn a new skill, which you can do. But, mm. like, the Lord will anoint you for what you're called to do. So it actually should be easy. That it's not, um, the difficulty of it is not, like, determining I don't know, I just think sometimes we think, like, the things of God are hard. <laughs> right. And I think that sometimes we expect it to be, like, this huge challenge and this huge battle. But it's not. There's, there's a rest and there's a peace when you're in, in God's perfect plan for your life. Totally. That, yeah, that, like, it doesn't even matter. There could be craziness going on. Yeah. But you have complete confidence on the inside of you that I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. And because Absolutely. of that, God is going to take care of me. Like, he's going to keep me here. And um, That is such a now word. That is such a really important word for people to hear. Yeah, that was that was good. So powerful. Yeah. Huh. Wow, Jesus. And, um, what was that? 
Jesus. Wow, Jesus. I love it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, and I just think like so, of it, so much of it comes down to knowing the voice of God in your life. Um, because that's how you're really going to know that you are where he wants you to be. Is that he will tell you. And yeah. if he hasn't, if, if he called you somewhere and he hasn't told you to leave yet, then it's like, it's like if you're, if you're following a GPS and you're going the right way, it doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell you any directions. But if you, if there's a change coming, if you, there's a turn coming, that's when it begins to speak to you. And so if mm. you are actually already where you need to be and you're like, and you had, you had direction from God to be where you are right now and you you haven't heard anything else, then just keep going. Just be faithful. And, and at the right time, the exact same way that God told you to be where you are right now is the same way he will speak to you again and, and tell you where to go next. And you really just have to believe God that he will speak to you, that he knows how to speak to you, that before you were even saved, that he knew how to get to you, he knew how to speak to your heart. Because we can get caught in the trap thinking that, oh, I just don't hear God, I don't hear his voice. But you're a child of God now, mm, and amen. you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you. So before you were even a child of God, you heard the voice of God, because yeah. you got saved. And so you That's have right. to trust God that wow. that He will speak to you in a way that you will hear Him, and that you will not doubt that it is God. And, and many times we're not 100% sure that it is God. I don't know what you, Pastor, have, but sometimes we just get an unction, and we just have to step hmm. out and see if it was God. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. I remember the first time, well, not the, well, the first time it happened uniquely, my wife and I, uh, we were attending a church and we kind of felt in our spirits, like we felt like something was coming and we just felt so comfortable and we just, for some time, we really had a strong impression that, you know, God was wanting us to move out of our comfort zone. And I think he spoke to us like, four or five times and then um or three or four times or something and then one time our own pastor preached a message about getting out of our comfort zones and we're like okay and then i i remember calling another pastor and saying like this is what we're feeling you know we've heard this heard this and this and this and now this message and he's like Listen, like, how many times does God have to speak? Eventually, you just have to step out, right? And so, um, yeah, exactly. And we were wondering, man, is this really God or is it not God? <laughs> so, but I think people are afraid to fail God. You know, I think some people are afraid to fail God and they're afraid to look bad. And I think, you know what, we have to say as a body of Christ, listen, it's okay sometimes to miss things. It's okay. We would rather see you and cheer you on for stepping out in a step of faith and at least trying something. You know, I mean, yes, maybe, you know, you pray about it, you get godly wisdom or whatever. But but if sometimes you just need to take the step. And you know what? Listen, we're not going to shoot you down. We want to stand with you. And, you know, we even if we don't think the same way, sometimes it's okay. You just take that step and just see, like... God will close the door if you're not supposed to be there. And so I think, like, playing sports, if you know, like, the word commit, like, okay, I'm going to commit to hitting that baseball. I'm going to commit to dunking that basketball, right? When you're committed, that means you're going for it. There's the point of no return, right? And I think, like, so there's, but you're st you're already running in the game and you're stepping toward that goal. You know what I mean? You're You're taking the step. And if the opening presents itself, um, the part of maturing, Amy, is this. If you're new to sports, you often won't look ahead and you're going to go for it and you're going to get shut down. But here's the deal. As you learn and you do it more often, you'll notice, okay, I, I only have this much time for the opponent on the other team to reach me. And so if I'm going to commit, I'm going to have to find that opening and if the opening presents itself, I got to go for it in a split second. I can't hesitate, but I also have to be willing to, to switch directions quickly 
if that opening closes, you know, and it's partially a skill that's learned, right? And so we can be skilled in hearing the Holy Spirit where we're going for it and things change. And sometimes you'll just be like, check, right? There'll be a little check in your spirit and you'll be like, mm, I'm, yeah. mm, I'm not sure, right? And so there's times where you learn to discern when to like hit the brakes or, you know, and wait on God, right? Yeah. But but don't let that stop you from um, sometimes making mistakes. It's okay, right? Because you can't learn without falling down. A baby can't walk without falling down a few times, right? Like part exactly. of learning the balance, right? So. Yeah, and that's exactly it, is that God sees us as his children. And like no parent like like sees their child fall down for like the 300th time. And yeah. it's like, oh wow, you fell again, you're never going to walk. Exactly. No, they know that child is going to walk one day. Wow. And so like God doesn't see you falling as a failure. He just says, all right, get up, let's go again. Like because yeah. he knows you'll Come get on. it one day. He knows. He's oh, a good Jesus. father. <laughs> Amen. That and is so awesome. Yeah, and that's also where like good godly counsel comes in. Is like you can you can bring it up to your pastor, to your mentor, to whoever you're submitted under, and, and just bring it up and say, Hey, this is what I feel in my spirit and um and if when you're submitted to somebody, like the Lord will speak to that person. Yeah. And they yep. they can sometimes confirm it or be like like, well, maybe you might want to go about it this way and just get wisdom on it. Yeah. And uh, yep. there's nothing wrong with that either. But often good leadership, you know, if they get a warning from God, I mean they'll share that with you, but there's times where, you know, they just have to trust the Holy Spirit in you as well, right? And it's just they're gonna sometimes they have to trust that God is leading you and say, listen, like, you know what, what go for it. If you really feel that, um, I'm not hearing anything really specific. So you know what, we're here and we'll pray about it. You go for it. If it doesn't work out, listen, you can always come back and we'll just, we'll, you know, we'll keep going, right? And we don't uh, have to shame them and all that stuff. But no, it's great. It's like the church should be a training grounds for people, a mentoring place, right? So yeah and um that's also where like testimonies are so powerful of like hearing where people started out because you might see where people are today and be like wow i'll never be like them or like how do you how do, like they're so natural at it but you didn't see them in their beginning days <laughs> yes i think i think of james maloney you know <laughs> Think of James Maloney when he started when he was in like 20 years old preaching. I mean, he said he'd rip everybody out of wheelchairs and most of them all fell flat on their face, you know. <laughs> you yeah. know, when he started out, he just, he looked like a fool, but he tried anything, you know. It's so funny. But now, like years later, it's like the craziest miracles that he sees happen are just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so encouraging to hear that, like, even for myself, we, so we have like houses of joy all around Tampa. And so, um, as like leaders in training, we'd be given just like the offering message to preach, which is only like 10 minutes long in somebody's house, like no more than 10 people there. So like not a lot of pressure, just share the word. And I'm telling you, my leader makes fun of me still. He doesn't make fun of me, but he laughs so much because just the work the Lord has done in my life. Because, like, every week, every single week, I would literally, like, study for hours, literally hours, and get to the house of joy and completely go blank. Like, no idea what to say. Like, like panicking on the inside. Like, what on earth am I even going to talk about? Like, I'm just going to read this thing. Nothing's going to happen. And I would... <laughs> it and I would literally end up crying wow. like I would be like leaving House of Joy crying because I felt like I did such a terrible job that like why do they keep asking me to do this I'm terrible at it I, it's not my gifting <laughs> and this was like two years ago like maybe even a year and a half ago like not long ago and but the Lord has done a work in my life hallelujah You know, 
know what the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. You know, and the thing is, you might have felt ashamed then, but as you kept studying the Word, the Holy Spirit did something on the inside. And you know what? God's strength comes through you in due season. You're, you, you know, that's part of the fruit of the Word of God in you. And so, you know what? Now, His strength comes through, and there's no more being ashamed. There's such a, a boldness, and there's a joy that replaces that that timidity right and it's uh yeah. and god gets glory because it's like you're transformed you're enjoying it and god is enjoying it and people are getting something out of it right and it's just like so it's so important to get that word into people don't quit you know yeah. the, the enemy just wants people to quit over offense over discouragement over di you know just difference of opinion and it's like man we let the devil defeat us as a body in unity it's so pathetic how many ways that we let the enemy just stop us. It's it's ridiculous. And, you know, I've even heard seasoned believers, even not long ago, I, I remember hearing like seasoned, long-term believers, you know, just talking out of their flesh. And it's like, you know, I've done it too, I guess. I can judge myself too, but, but like... But I'm, I'm, I'm like way past the point of, as far as I'm concerned, of like just quitting. Like, that's not even an option, right? Like, what do you mean quit? What do you mean like, oh, that person spoke to me wrong, so I don't think I'm coming back to church. Are you serious? Like, you are the church. You're the body. God says we're one and that we're all needed. Like, we're all needed to work together. And I think when can we change the mindset for once and all to where when someone hurts us that we recognize something they're going through they need they need rescue in when are we going to step up and say you know what god instead of me being offended thank you lord that it was me that 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 saw what something is going on in them and that you can use me to go and cover their their mistake and not spread it around and i can be the rescue i can be jesus to them you know what I mean? Come in and cover them and promote healing and restoration. You know, what did Jesus say? We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, man. Right? And But, man, when do we take it seriously, right? And, um, and, I, and um, I've just been teaching in Corinthians and on communion and, like, the, the amazing how the whole 1 Corinthians letter is all about the body and unity and functioning together and and like, I don't know about you guys, but I would like to live out my days to the full and accomplish my mission, you know, that God has for me without being weak and sick and dying early, you know? Um, and that's what Paul addresses. And if you read the whole letter, it's, it's, it's right there. It's all there. But like building your testimonies, you know, like your testimonies come out of that place of faith come out of that place where you surrender your flesh and you obey god and then man watch god move it's just crazy amy and we've seen so much change in you and and just watching you become just confident i would say in the word of god man i just love your childlike faith i think you should pray for everyone watching tonight for just a release of that childlike trust Sure. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Lord, hmm. I just thank you for a revelation <clears throat> in your church today that you are a good God hmm. who and who has perfect plans for our lives, that we can trust you with everything. That you are God Almighty, that that you truly are a good Lord, and we believe that you are a good God, yes. and that you only have good things for us greater than what we could ever hope, dream, or imagine. When we truly believe that, it is easy to trust you. And so, God, I just thank you for a revelation of your goodness today. That people would have an understanding of your unending, unchanging love for them. 
that doesn't matter what they do, it doesn't matter what situation that they get in, that you are always there for them, that they can always rely on you. And Lord, I just thank you for a faith and for a boldness and a courage to just trust you, to just step out and to just trust you, that your word is true, that it is impossible for it to fail. It is not even possible for your word to fail them. And so, Father, I thank you for, for just faith rising up inside of them today, that they would stand in boldness, that they would stand in victoriously in the things that you have promised them that they would not be swayed to the right or to the left yes. but that they would stay solely sold out on your word in jesus mighty name amen amen yeah amen so good did you have did you have more that you were supposed to share what was that did you have more that you were supposed to share Come on. And testimonies are great, but it's the word of God that changes you. Yeah. And so um, I just have a couple scriptures here, and then and then that's all I've got. So then we'll uh, then we'll take some prayer requests after that. Oh yeah, sounds great. Yes. So Proverbs three five to six says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding." In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Amen. That's a huge thing is don't lean on your own understanding. Just trust God. Just trust God. I'm sorry. Mm. I'm used to, like, I've gotten used to, like, five-hour services. So <laughs> I'm used to, like, going on for a long, long, long time. <laughs> um, That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 30, 21 says, And your ears shall hear the word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. So that's really it. That's that's how you that's how you walk by faith. It's how you that's how you live in God's perfect will is you just take the word of God and you just believe it. I don't care what circumstances say. I believe the word of God more than your circumstance. I don't care what, what your circumstances say. I believe the word of God more than I believe what you're in right now. Wow. And you just have to grab a hold of it like that and just own it and say, God, your word is for me and I believe it. It doesn't matter. This is what is going to come to pass. You have to decide it in your heart. And you will see miracles. You will see the abundant provision of the Lord. You will see him do great and mighty works in your life. Amen. And he will take you places that you never, ever, ever could have gone on your own. That's you could powerful. Have never opened that door on your own, and it's awesome. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Come on, Jesus. This is so good. So good. So good. So um, we had a prayer request come in um, for a lady named Megan. Her brother. Um. Her brother's car was found near Jasper, and he was last seen on Friday. So I guess we're praying for a missing person. But thank okay. God, no one's missing in the eyes of God. God knows where everybody okay. is. So, um, yeah, let's pray for uh, Megan's brother, that uh, that the people will be able to locate him. We just pray that God will um, take care of the situation. So. Yeah, go ahead, Amy. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that you see everything going on on this planet, that there is nothing mm. that you do not care about. There's nothing yes. that you do not see. And so, Father, we just ask you right now just to, to reveal where this man is, God, that he would be found, that you'd be found alive and well and mm -hmm. healthy in Jesus' mighty Jesus, name, yeah. that any yeah. plan of the enemy to take him out would be yes. destroyed in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. And Jesus, I thank you, Father, for his safe return. And I thank you, God, for the testimony of the miracles that he, uh, that he experienced, God, for your mighty hand moving on his behalf in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. I just agree, Lord. He will be found in the next 24 hours. In Amen. Jesus' name, thank you, God. And Lord, you always do more than we can ask or imagine <laughs> when we come in faith. <laughs> I love it. Praise you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Just think about that when you ask God for something. 
that he can do more than you can ask or imagine. That is so good. So, yeah. so typically, your prayers should be answered better than what you asked. Most people yeah. don't even get a tenth of what they asked, you know? Mm. Hallelujah. That's changing. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know if... I'm just trying to find if uh, I had any other requests. Yes. Uh, there's a lady that we know. And... Uh, her friend was in a hospital in Regina. Uh, I don't know if it was a diagnosis of brain cancer or something, but anyway, um, so that person I think was taking treatment but stopped. So that yeah, let's just pray for that. Let's just um, or let's just minister to that. Just go ahead. We're gonna just walk in agreement, guys. Right now, we just we just hold up. Uh, I don't even know her name, but you know what Jesus does, and uh, He's the healer. So let's just declare His healing and power over this situation. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Cancer is no match for the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, Thank so you, God, for the spirit of life. That that greater is He who is in in us than he who is in the world and I thank you God that that spirit of life inside of that person cancels out every cell of cancer that it mm -hmm. is stronger and it is more powerful than any sickness any disease that the blood of Jesus flowing through that person that it eliminates every sickness every disease yes that that cancer is is cursed at the root in Jesus, Jesus mighty name. name they are free Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. That was easy. Yeah. Now we got to start. <laughs> we really have to come to Jesus with the attitude that it's easy. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I just want to come to situations where people come to you with something that they talk about being so difficult. And it's like, okay, let's just take care of this easy thing. And then, uh, then let's move on, you know? Praise God. Hop on the flight. Hop on the healing flight. Amen. Yeah. You it's know? all perspective. If you think about Jesus, he, uh, he, he paid for your sin. He saved you from, from hell. He saved you from eternal damnation. You think he, if he could do that, surely it would be. it is very easy for him. To, well, he already did it. It's very easy for a simple disease to be cured out of your body. Yep. That he's already done far, far, far greater things than that. That's right. Absolutely. You know, and sometimes we focus so much on where we've been, and that's all we know. We just, we just want to tell everybody about where we've been and where we're stuck instead of getting on the plane and going to where we want to go. And so sure. we need to make a decision that we're flying out of our current location and out of our past into our glorious future. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Okay, so... Well, I think we've got our prayer requests covered right now. But, uh, you guys, we want to sow into Amy. So I just feel like God's telling me to pledge $100 tonight. To you, Amy. So, uh, I need to send that to you. Praise God. I'll talk to my wife about it after. Hallelujah. It's all good. But, uh, Holy Spirit just said a hundred. So, I don't know anybody else. Whatever God puts on your heart. Uh, you know what? I'm going to pop up her email address here. So, you guys can know where to e-transfer her. And that is at uh, amynewdorf at live.com. Is that right? Yes, sir. I hope that's showing up on the screen properly. Amy Newdorf at live.com. Praise God. So make sure you guys, if God speaks to you and says to send Amy, you know what? You're not just sending money. You're sending Amy into her calling. Praise God for that. So let's make sure that we're uh, obeying the Holy Spirit in this, you know? God's going to prosper us, um, or He already has prospered us, right? 
so that we can bless and be an overflow. As long as we still have something in our account, I mean, we still have something to give. As long as there's something still there and God says give it, give it, right? So it all belongs to him anyway. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So that is the email address you guys can give tonight. So send her an offering that the Lord tells you to send her. Now I'm going to challenge you. Don't let it be any less than $10. Come on. believe Maybe if $10 is a stretch for you. That's okay. You know, I, I find like so often I run into situations where I, I just throw someone 5 or 10 or sometimes 20 or whatever. And um, it's really bad to give me like cash spending money because I usually end up giving it all the way to people. Like I just do. I just like, I just keep sewing it into people and then I got, then I'm like out of cash and stuck with my card again. So, and then, uh, and then with my budget. So, <laughs> So I love having cash on me just because to me it's just like seed money, you know? I just love having seed money. And um but for me it's like okay, you know, um we're in a season where we're believing God for certain things. And so uh hey, you know what? I want to take that hundred out of my budget and I want to put that toward you this week in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. So you guys, we love you. We bless you. I don't know, Amy, do you have any, um, not last words, I hope not, but <laughs> last words for the show. <laughs> Praise God. I, I think, I think I'm good. Or closing comments, rather, maybe. Closing comments. Awesome. Well, you know what? Let us, yeah, go ahead, and then I'm going to pray for you. Thank you so much for that word. I receive that tonight in Jesus name and I just want to I just want to really commit to walking in in just more of that, more consistently. Um so yeah, Father, thank you so much for Amy's life tonight, God. We bless her. Lord, we want to honor your work inside of her. And Lord, what you're doing in her. God, we just want to affirm that tonight. We confirm God that you have called her, Lord. To do great and mighty things by your spirit. Oh, Thank you, Father. Lord, and I just thank you, God, for calling her in Jesus' name, Father. And I just want to declare some things over her, a blessing over her, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for honoring it um, in Jesus' name. Amy, I know a while ago you and I talked. And this is so funny. Because I remember the last time you and I talked, um, God gave me a word over you about being an Esther and having the favor of God and the wisdom of God to handle situations and like um, opening doors um, to, to, to people or, or, or high things, a key, you know, just certain key areas that um, are just very difficult, you know, where Esther was able to, to get the heart of the king. And God's favor was there. And I just see like nations opening doors because of God's wisdom in you and different things. 
But look at this. So I opened the Bible up. I was flipping through and I came to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom cries out. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse, in the opening of the gates. In the city she utters her words and sayings. You know, and I just declare over you that the wisdom of God cries out. It comes out of you and fills the streets and, and comes to the place, the key, the key gates of the cities and the palaces, you know, um, where the cities receive, where the things enter in a city, where there's gates that either allow or don't allow things in and where God anoints you and gives you the favor that your words open the gates of cities where where they've been closed to the things of God, that, you know, the, the purposes of God, because right now, you know what, just like the, the just like Israel or the Jews were, were to be annihilated by Haman and the wickedness of the enemy, you know what, the enemy has such an agenda against the church in these days. And Amy, I just believe that God's wisdom is on your, your tongue. And you know what, as you release certain words, you know what, those doors... That have been locked tight against the work of God are going to be opened up. And people are going to be willing to receive and, and begin to hear the case for Christ. The case for the gospel. The case for the good news. And I just believe somehow you're going to be instrumental in just opening those places up. By the power of God and what the gift God has given you. So I just thank God for his favor. I declare, I prophesy, you, you've got the favor of God. Doors are opening where you speak to people. A hundred times they've said no to someone else, they'll say yes to you in Jesus' name. I just thank God. God will put you in that place of connection. And uh, and like, yeah, I just keep seeing that. Where, they, where a hundred times they've said no, when you come, they will say yes. They will receive. They will open up. And uh, and what was what was planned against the church will turn be turned against the very ones that have planned that you know planned pandemics and planned wickedness and planned the closing of god's work you know what that's going to be turned around and i don't i have no clue about any of this in the natural but i just see it in the spirit and i declare that over you in jesus name and so we just want you to know that uh, we want to support you in prayer and also to give as God tells us to give. And um, anywhere, if I've ever missed it, you know, forgive me. But um, I just want to make sure that I'm sowing in when God speaks to me. And so it's been a blessing to have you, Amy. We love you. Everybody give her a thumbs up, a wave. God, God bless you. Um, and as you close, can you quickly give a gospel invitation? Because we never want to miss the opportunity to bring a soul in and then we will sign off yeah absolutely um yeah so maybe you're watching this broadcast right now and you don't even know why you're watching it you just clicked on it it just popped up on your screen and um it's because the lord wants you to know how much he loves you he wants you to know how how much of a great plan he has for your life. Mm. He wants you to know that he has a home in heaven for you. That he paid a price on the cross for you so you can live free and victorious. That you can live free from sin. You can live free from bondage and addiction. You can live free from self. You can live free mm -hmm. from depression. You can live free from anything that is weighing you down. Sickness. Anything that is not, that, that he already paid the price for you to be free. And that is good Amen. news. Amen. That is good news that so Jesus good. has already come and, and paid the price to set you free. And all you have to do right now is just receive it. It's just like any gift. Like if I was standing right in front of you and, and just wanted to give you a gift, you don't have to do anything for it. You don't have to earn it. It's already paid for. It's already Amen. yours. You just have to take it. You just have to grab a hold of it and say, okay, this is mine, and I receive it. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to pray with everybody here just in a little bit. But also maybe um, maybe you are at a place where you you have given your heart to Jesus, but things have happened, and um, and you know you need you need to get your heart right with the Lord, and, and he's convicting you of some things right now. That's okay. It's because he loves you. He he yes. corrects those whom he loves. Amen. And so don't 
don't come ashamed. Come in boldness and confidence and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sh- for showing me where I've been wrong. And um, and just surrender your heart afresh to the Lord today. And um, Or maybe also that you are saved and and uh, and you, you believe you have a right relationship with the Lord. For some reason, you're just not sure that you would go to heaven today. Um, I want to pray for all of you. So just lift your hands wherever you are right now, if that's you, and just close your eyes. And I believe God is going to come and touch you right now. And so, Father, I thank you right now for every single person who is answering the call that you've put on their hearts right now, answering the tug of the Holy Spirit on their hearts right now to just re-surrender their lives to you or to dedicate their lives to you for the first time to receive that free gift that you have for them. Lord, I thank you for open hearts. I thank you, God, that that their hearts are good ground, that that um, that they will receive the word of the Lord, that they are free, that they are forgiven, yes. and that they can live a victorious Christian life in right now and for the rest of eternity. So, so as you pray this with me, I believe that bondages are going to be broken off yes. of you. As you pray this with me right now, I believe that demons are going to flee because the power of the Holy Spirit is going to come on you and he's going to set you free tonight. Amen. So lift your hands and say this with me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I ask you to come right now. I ask you to come right now. And to fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Give me of my sins. I want to live for you. I want to live for you, God. Let me never be the same. Let me never be the same. Lord, I ask you to use me. Lord, use me. Yeah. Wow. Do a mighty work in me. Do a mighty work in everyone, Father. So that the things that you have done in me. So what you have done in me. I can give away to other people. I can give to other people. In Jesus mighty name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on if you guys prayed that tonight. With faith. The measure of faith God has given you. And you have now confessed it with your mouth. That Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. You know what the Bible says. You are saved. Hallelujah. You've got a new home and a new life that comes from heaven and comes from Jesus. And it doesn't it's not just a location or a place, but you know what? It is inside of you. The kingdom has come into your life and Jesus will begin to live through you. And uh, if you need a Bible, you need anything to get started to know God, you know what? Contact us. Or contact Amy, her email's there, and, and we want to make sure we hook you up with a good church, um, with a, a Bible study, um, some foundations of faith, whatever it takes to get you plugged in and to, to walk this amazing life with God. We just love you guys. We bless you in Jesus' name. And again, Amy, thank you. It's been such a privilege to have you. It always is. And we look forward to doing this again. Um, we're going to plan to do this once a month, actually. That's kind of the goal. And so you guys will be looking forward to hearing Amy again, or at least the Holy Spirit through her. Praise God. Anyway, be blessed, everyone. Have an amazing night in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. And we will see you guys tomorrow night, right here, again, live Brother Les will be teaching at 7 p.m. So be blessed in Jesus' name.